The souls of the saints are rejoicing in heaven, the saints who followed the footsteps of Christ. And since for love of him they shed their blood, they now exult with Christ forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. So any of the church honors or memories of her two early martyrs, one is St. Cornelius, who was the Pope in the second century, and then St. Cyprian, who was the Bishop of Carthage in Northern Africa in the second century. They have to be good friends, and they would correspond uh, together uh, a lot. Interesting was St. Cornelius, he was a priest in Rome, and, and uh, they did not have a, a, a Pope in Rome for about a year because of the persecutions, and then he was elected by the priests of the, of the Diocese of Rome to be Pope. First thing he did was run out of town. He didn't want the job, so he left. But they they eventually caught up with him and convinced him to to take over the leadership as bishop of Rome, which he did for a few years, and then he was martyred. Same case with Cyprian when he want, when they asked him to be a priest, he ran out of town too. Now these guys want to be bishops, you know, and I understand why. Who wants that job, right? So they were smart guys, but eventually they both of them surrendered to that call to the episcopacy and both uh, earned the the. Uh, the badge of martyrdom. So we honor these two great saints, early saints in our church, in our mass today. Let us begin our Eucharist by first acknowledging our own sinfulness as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who gave Saints Cornelius and Cyprian to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs, grant that through their intercession we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, Amen. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, love is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests, it is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put a chi aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then 
face to face. At present, I know partially. Then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the people people the Lord Lord has chosen chosen to be his be his own. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten string lyre, chant his praises. Sing to him a new song. Pluck the strings carefully, skillfully, with shouts of gladness. Blessed the people people the the Lord has chosen chosen to be his own. For upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Blessed Blessed the the people the Lord has chosen chosen to be be his his own. own. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Blessed the people people the Lord Lord has chosen chosen to be be his own. own. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the crowds, to what shall I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children who sit in a marketplace and call to one another, we played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not weep. For John the Baptist came neither eating food nor drinking wine, and you said, he is possessed by a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you said, look, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by all her children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The beautiful passage from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians is probably one of the best known in the sacred scriptures. The vast majority of couples that I have witnessed their weddings choose that as one of the readings for their wedding. It is that popular. The love that St. Paul describes is the same kind of love that I think all of us hope for, yet it's difficult to live that love daily because this perfect kind of love requires effort and commitment. It demands grace and all our energy to make a reality. It's just that it was witnessed by Cornelius and Cyprian. But those are cases where people truly embraced their fear and did not allow their fear to overtake their love. This kind of love requires self-control and humility, forgiveness of others, and a selflessness that is modeled on that of Jesus. Every work of love and kindness expresses the love of God. And St. Paul makes it clear in this passage that that without love we gain nothing, that there is no relationship with God without love. And our identity as disciples of Jesus must be rooted in love, as that old song from the 1960s, they will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. In this passage, St. Paul defines love, getting a little, I'm going to get into some grammatical stuff here, by the use of descriptive adjectives. Love is patient. Love is kind. And while these words possess the power of the Holy Spirit that inspired them, After you've read this reading as many times as I have, it kind of loses something after a while. Sounds kind of stale. So I went back to the first letter of John, when John used similar words to describe God, but reversed their order. John writes, God is love. He does not say love is God, but God is love. 
Hmm. What if we did that with Paul's passage here? Will it give us a little deeper meaning of what Paul is saying? So let's use the Jonine formula, just a little experiment this morning, to, and, and transpose the words. See if they have more dynamic quality to them. Patience is love. Doing things patiently for another is a beautiful expression of God's love. God's patience with us is an expression of his love for us. Your patience with your spouse, your family, children, an aging parent, that is an expression of his love for them as well. Kindness is love. Every act of kindness that you show, whether, again, to a family, friend, or stranger, expresses love for them. When Jesus healed or fed or forgave or showed any kind of kindness toward another, it was an expression of his love for them. Kindness is love. To bear all things is love. When I can accept hardships in helping another person, it is a sign of my love not only for them, but my love for God, because that person is a child of God. Now we can also use this Jonine formula to describe what Paul writes is not love. Jealousy is not love. It is rooted in anger and not in affection for one another, because it shows a desire to have what the other person has. Rudeness is not love, because it witnesses a lack of respect for the other person. Love of God is to treat all of his children with respect. To seek one's own interests is not love, because it's to be self-centered and selfish. To be other-centered is authentic love. To have a quick temper is not love, because it shows a complete lack of patience and acceptance of the limitations of another person. So reading this passage from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians this way might make it a little more meaningful for you. You might try it sometime, open up that passage in scripture and read it that way, kind of transpose the words to better express the power of St. John's expression, God is love. God is love. To be a person of faith is love. To be a person of hope is love. There is no greater virtue than love. And they will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Let us stand now and in trust offer our, pr our prayers to the Lord. And what are your prayers? Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. With the intentions of Hope Hudson, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. For those who are still suffering with the pandemic, with the COVID virus, for their families, for their healing, we pray to the Lord. For our men and women who are serving in our armed forces, for their families, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers that remain in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. And entrusting our prayers to the Blessed Mother, we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Let the spirit of your joy fill you with peace and joy in the one you have sent Christ our Savior. So the blessings of the Lord be with you. The Lord shall be my light and your light shall shine on my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people in honor of the passion of your holy martyrs, St. Cornelius and Cyprian. And may the gifts that gave them courage under persecution make us too steadfast in our trials. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ Jesus, our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our bishop, John and Ramon, his assistant bishops, with all the clergy, the religious, those consecrated to your service and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Cornelius, Cyprian, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Take away this. Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living Father, the Holy Spirit, by your death we pray. Amen. Amen. Our sins and every evil we do unto thee, O Jesus, forgive us and lead us into the fire. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Through these mysteries which we have received, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the example of the martyrs, St. Cornelius and Cyprian, we may be strengthened with the fortitude of your spirit to bear witness to the truth of the gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament begins immediately following Mass in the St. Francis Chapel, and it will conclude with benediction at 11.45 this morning. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.